welcome you all this evening. I hope that it's going to be a pleasant evening because we hope the weather holds and uh, that we're going to have a good time watching our performers on the stage. Good a bit of sad news. The producer of the play, Mrs. Of the play, Mrs. Golnaz Mystery, cannot be with us this evening. Unfortunately, had to, she had to rush off to Bombay very early this morning because she had lost her father-in-law. I normally do not go backstage before a production because I know the staff have got everything under control. But in her absence, I just went to have a word with the boys, with the children participating, and they're all confident that they will do well and that they will honor the good work of Mrs. Mystery and the way she had taught them for the play tonight. We pray for her father-in-law. Do say a silent prayer for her and the family as well as him. On a more joyous note, I'd like to welcome amongst us this evening the headmasters, the headmistresses, the supervisor from the other schools, the Bishop Squared School Kalyani Nagar and Undri. It's always a pleasure when all our three schools get together for a function like this or for any other function organized by the Bishop School. I thank all the staff that have helped to get this hall ready, all those who have helped in producing the play tonight. We've had a number of shows so far and everybody has enjoyed what they've seen. The Bishop School children always give off their very best. No matter what the occasion, no matter how big it is or how small, they always keep that flag flying very, very high. And as an encouragement this evening, without their producer, let us give them a big round of applause by way of... Children, children behind the stage, that is to let you know that the whole school is rooting for you at the moment. On a more joyous note, I'd like to welcome amongst us this evening our Korean delegation. At the moment, we are having a group of students, their principal and two teachers from South Korea who've been with us for a few days. And this is now a traditional visit between our two schools. One year we go there, the next day come here. They were supposed to be with us last year, but unfortunately, they had that very sad tragedy when the ferry went down killing so many students. So the meet was postponed last year. But I'd like to welcome them. They've had a good time so far. They've enjoyed every moment of being in Bishops. A special welcome to the principal, Mr. Kim Sang-man, to the head teacher, Mr. Jung Hoiman, and to the teacher, Mr. Lee Young Sweet. Gentlemen, I cannot see you, but I know you're down there somewhere. I hope you're going to enjoy this evening's play. We always put up very good plays. With that, ladies and gentlemen, let us get back to tradition. Let us very silently bow our heads in a word of prayer. Very silently, I said. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the effort that these children backstage have put into bringing us this production today. We thank you for all the teachers who have played a part in any way in getting this play ready and getting the children prepared for it. Father, we know that the Bishop School children always give off their very best, and there is never a moment when we are not proud of their productions. We pray especially for the producer, Mrs. Gulnar's mystery, as she mourns the death of her father-in-law in Bombay. We pray, Lord, that you rest his soul in peace and that you bless the family members, that you be amongst them to take away their sorrow or to make it less. Father, as we open the curtain on this evening's performance, we ask for your blessing on each child. We ask for your blessing on everyone who has a hand in today's production. We thank you for the headmaster, Mr. Edwin, and all the efforts he puts in behind the scenes to get things ready 
always in good time and in perfection. Father, it's not only him, but it's so many teachers involved, and we bless each one of them in your holy name. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get on with the production now. A very good evening to one and all present here today. The play you are about to witness is titled The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is a classic tale written by Victor Hugo. Our play is based on the Walt Disney adaptation of the same. In the 15th century Paris, Clopet, the puppeteer, tells the story of Quasimodo, the misshapen but gentle-souled bell ringer of Notre Dame, who was nearly killed as a baby by Claude Frollo, the Minister of Justice. But Frollo was forced by the Archdeacon of Notre Dame to raise Quasimodo as his own. Now a young man, Quasimodo, is hidden from the world by Frollo in the bell tower of the cathedral. But during the Festival of Fools, Quasimodo, cheered on by his gargoyle friends, Victor, Hugo, and Lavon, decides to take part in the festivities where he meets the lovely gypsy girl, Esmeralda, and the handsome soldier, Phoebus. The three of them find themselves pitted against Frollo's cruelty and his attempts to destroy the home of the gypsies, the Court of Miracles. Quasimodo must desperately defend both Esmeralda and the very Cathedral of Notre Dame. So ladies and gentlemen, and all our dear students, the Bishop School Camp and Junior College proudly presents the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Gypsy. 
greasy worm into the palace of justice. Who's there? What are you hiding? Stolen goods, no doubt. Take them from her. A baby? A monster! Stop! Cried the Archdeacon. This is an unholy demon. I'm sending it back to hell where it belongs. See that the innocent blood you have spilt on the steps of Notre Dame. I am guiltless, she ran, I pursued. Now you must sap this child's blood to your guilt on the steps of Notre Dame. My conscience? You can lie to yourself and your minions. You can claim that you haven't to grow. But you never can run from behind what you've done from the eyes. The very eyes of Notre Dame. And for one time in his life of power and control. Must I do? Take care of the child. Raise it as your own. What? I'm to be saddled with this misshapen. Very well. Let him live here with you in your church. Your. But where? Anywhere. Just make sure he's locked up far away so that he can never be seen again. Perhaps in the bell tower. You never know. Our Lord works in mysterious ways. And yet, this foul creature may prove to be of some use to me someday. And Frollo gave the child a cruel name. A name that means half fault. Quasimodo. To guess if you can sing the bells of Nora who is the monster and who is the bell? Sing the bells, 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 Morning. Will today be the day? Are you ready to fly? You sure? Good day to try. Why? If I chose a day to fly, oh, this would be it. The festival of fools, the jugglers, the music, and dancing. Go on. Nobody wants to stay cooped up here forever. Oh, man, I thought he'd never leave. I'll be spitting feathers for a week. <laughs> That's what you get for sleeping with your mouth open. Ha, <laughs> Go scare a nun. Hey, Quasi, what's going on down there? A feast? <gasps> a flogging? Mm, a festival. Oh, you mean the festival of fools? All right, all right. Pour the wine and cut the cheese. It is a treat to watch the colorful pageantry of the simple peasant folk. Boy, nothing like balcony seats for watching the old festival of fools. Yeah, watching. Hey, hey, what gives? What's the matter, Quasimodo? Aren't you going to watch the festival with us? I don't get it. Perhaps he's sick. Impossible. If 20 years of listening to you two hasn't made him sick by now, nothing ever will. But watching the Festival of Fools has always been the highlight of the year for Quasimodo. Well, what good is watching the party if you never get to go near it? We're just gargoyles. We're made of stone. But he's not made of stone like us now, is he? Hey, Quasi. What's wrong? You want to tell old Laverne all about it? It's just that I feel like... 
like watching the festival, that's all. Well, have you ever thought of going there instead? I couldn't. I'm not normal. Oh, quasi, qua, qua. Do you mind? I would like to have a moment with the boy in private, if it's all right with you. Hey, hey, quit beating around the belt, ah. What do we got to do? Paint you a fresco? As your friends and guardians, we insist you attend the festival. Me? No, the Pope. Of course, you. Uh, it would be a veritable potpourri of educational experience. Wine, women, and song. You can learn to identify various regional cheeses. Bobbing for snails. And the indigenous folk music. Oh, Quasimodo. Take it from an old spectator. Life's not a spectator sport. If watching is all you're going to do, then you're going to watch your life go by without you. Yes, you're human, with the hair and the flesh and the navel lint. <coughs> we, we're just part of the architecture. Right, Victor? Yet, if you chip us, will we not flake? If you moisten us, do we not grow moss? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, Quasimodo, just grab a fresh tunic, a clean pair of hoes, and... Um... Thanks for the encouragement. But y'all all are forgetting one thing. What? what? My master, Frollo. Oh, Frollo. Right. Well, when he says, you're forbidden from ever leaving the bell tower, does he mean ever, ever? Never, ever. And he hates the Feast of Fools. He'd be furious if I asked to go. Hmm. Who says? You gotta ask. Oh, no. Oh, yes, you sneak out. It's just one afternoon. I and you sneak right back in. You never know you were gone. I mean, if I got caught? Better to beg forgiveness and to ask permission. He might see me. You could wear a disguise. Just this once. What Frollo doesn't know can't hurt you. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> ah, Quasimodo. Remember now, nobody wants to stay cooped up here forever. You're right, I'll go. Bingo! Bingo. I'll get cleaned up. You, you said it. it. I'll stroll down those stairs. Woo! I'll march to the door and... Good morning, Quasimodo. Um, good morning, sir. Dear boy, whomever are you talking to? My friends. Ah, I see. <laughs> And what are your friends made of? Stone. Can stone talk? No, it can't. That's right, you're a smart lad. Lunch. Shall we revise the alphabet today? Yes, master, I would like that very much. Very well. A. Abomination. B. Blasphemy. C. Contrition. D. Damnation. E. Eternal damnation. Very good. <laughs> F. Festival. <laughs> Excuse me? Forgiveness. You are thinking about going to the festival? Master, it's just that you go there every year. I am a public official. I must go. But I don't enjoy a moment. Thieves and hustlers and the dregs of humankind, all mixed together in a shallow, drunken stupor. I didn't mean to upset you, Master. Quasimodo, can't you understand? When your heartless mother abandoned you, anybody else would have killed you. And this, my thanks for taking you in and raising you as my own son. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, Quasimodo, you don't know what it's like out there. I do. I do. The world is 
is wicked. Sigh alone, you can trust in this whole city. I am your only friend. I will keep you, feed you, teach you, dress you. I will look upon you without fear. How can I protect you, boy, unless you always stay in here, away in here? You are deformed, and you are ugly. These are crimes for which the world shows little pity. You do not comprehend. You as a monster, I'm that they will with stone and gin. Why invite their calumny and consternation? Stay in here, be faithful, be grateful, do as I say, obey and stay in. You're good to me, Master. I'm sorry. You are forgiven. But remember, Quasimodo, this is your sanctuary. My sanctuary. Safe behind these windows and these parapets of stone, gazing at the people down below me. All my life I watch them as I hide up here alone Hungry for the histories they show me All my life I memorize their faces Knowing them as they will never know me All my life I wonder how it feels to pass a day not above them But part of them and out there living in the sun Give me one day out there All I ask is one To hold forever out there Where they all live on Well, what I give What I dare just to live one day out there Out there among the millers and the weavers and their wives Through the roofs and gables I can see them Every day they shout and scold and go about their lives Heedless of the gift it is to be them If I was in the skin high treasure Every instant out there Strolling by the sand Taste some morning out there Like ordinary men Who freely walk about them just one day and then I swear I'll be content With my share Won't resent, won't despair Old and bent, I won't care I'll have spent one Town for only a couple of decades, and they change everything. Ah, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I'm looking for the Palace of Justice. Would you want? Hmm. I guess not. All right, Gypsy. Where did you get the money? 
For your information, I earned it. Gypsies don't earn money. You steal it! You know lots about stealing. You troublemaker! Maybe a day in the stocks will cool you down. <laughs> I'll teach you a lesson, peasant. You are saying lieutenant? Oh, Captain, at your service, sir. I know you have a lot in your mind right now. But the palace of justice. Make way for the captain. Guards! Go! Oh. Ease up. Wait between lashes. Otherwise, the older sting will dull him to the new. So. Ah, so this is the gallant Captain Phoebus. Home from the wars? Reporting for duty as ordered, sir. Your service record precedes you, Captain. I expect nothing but the best from a war hero of your caliber. And you shall have it, sir. I guarantee it. Yes, um, my last captain of the guard was a bit of a disappointment to me. <laughs> well, no matter. I'm sure you'll whip my men into fine shape. Uh, thank you, sir. A tremendous honor. You come to Paris in her darkest hour, Captain. It will take a firm hand to save the weak-minded from being so easily misled. Ah, uh, misled, sir? Look, Captain! Gypsies! Gypsies live outside the normal order. Their heathen ways inflame the people's lowest instincts. And they must be stopped. So I was summoned from the wars to capture fortune tellers and farm leaders? Oh, the real war, Captain, is what you see before you. For 20 years, I have been taking care of these gypsies, one by one. Yet, for all my success, they have thrived. And, well, if I may, it is said that they have a stronghold within the very walls of this city. They call it the Court of Miracles. Well, you make your point quite vividly, Minister. You know, I like you, Captain. Shall we? Yeah. Mr. Foods! Oh, duty calls. Have you ever attended a peasant festival, Captain? Well, not recently, sir. Then this should be quite an education for you. Come along. Morel 
life is sweet. It's the day for breaking rules. Come and join the feast. Girl, get down here at once. Yes, Your Honor. Just as soon as I freed this poor creature. I forbid it. How dare you defy me? You mistreat this poor boy the same way you mistreat my people. You speak of justice, yet you are cruel to those most in need of your help. Silence! Justice! Mark my words, Gypsy. You will pay for this insolence. Then it appears we've crowned the wrong fool. The only fool I see is you. Captain Phoebus! Arrest her! Guards! Now let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of you and one of me. What's a poor girl to do? I take her! Pa! Witchcraft! Find her, Captain! I want her! Where is she? Oh boy! Where is she? Over here! <laughs> what a woman! Find her, Captain. I want her alive. Yes, sir. Seal off the area, guards! Find the gypsy girl, but do not harm her. Stop! I'm sorry, Master. I will not disobey you again. But not for long. You! Whoa, whoa, easy there. I'm um, all right. 
Just calm down. Just give me a chance to apologize. For what? That, for example. You sneaky creature. <laughs> Watch it. You're in a church. Are you always this charming? Or am I just lucky? Candlelight, privacy, music. Can't think of a better place for hand-to-hand -hand combat. You fight as well as any man. Ha, funny. I was just going to say the same thing about you. Now oh, that's sitting a little below the belt, don't you think? No, that is. Touche. Uh, I didn't know you had a kid. Well, he doesn't take kindly to soldiers, you see. Well, I noticed. Permit me. I'm Phoebus. It means sun god. And uh, you are? Is that an interrogation? It's called an introduction, you know. You're not arresting me? Well, not as long as you're in here. I can't. You're not at all like the other soldiers. Thank you. So, if you're not going to arrest me, what do you want? Well, I'd settle for your name. Esmeralda. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Much better than Phoebus, anyway. Good work, Captain. Now arrest her. Claim sanctuary. Say it. You tricked me. I'm waiting, Captain. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. She claims sanctuary. There's nothing I can do. Then drag her outside. No, no. You will not touch her. Don't worry, child. Minister Frollo has learned his lesson years ago to respect the sanctity of the church. Come, Phoebus. You think you've outwitted me, but I am a patient man. And gypsies don't do well inside stone walls. What do you mean? I was just imagining a rope around that beautiful neck. I know what you were imagining. Such a clever witch. So typical of your kind to twist the truth and cloud the mind with unholy thoughts. Well, no matter. You've chosen a magnificent prison. But it is a prison nonetheless. Step one foot outside and you're mine. One thing, Jolly. If Frollo thinks he can keep us here, he is wrong. Don't act rashly, child. You created quite a stir at the festival. It won't be wise to arouse Frollo's anger further. You saw what he did out there? Let the crowd torture the poor boy? I thought at least one of them would stand up to him. But then, what do they have against people who are different anyway? You can't right all the wrongs in this world by yourself. Nobody's going to help. That's for sure. Perhaps there is someone in here who can.
He's got a girl with him. Maybe today wasn't a total loss after all. A vision of loveliness. The one in the dress ain't bad either. Hey, Quasi! Congratulations! Got the girls chasing you already, eh? Actually, I... You mustn't run too fast or she'll get away. Uh, yes, I know that. Give her some slack, then reel her in. Then give her some slack, then reel her in. Then give her some slack. Oh, knock it off, Hugo! She's a girl, not a mackerel. I was afraid I'd lost you. It's nice meeting you. I have chores to do. No, wait! I'm really sorry about this afternoon. I had no idea who you were. I would never in my life have pulled you up on the stage. Uh, what is this place? This is where I live. You made all these things yourself? Most of them. If I could do this, you wouldn't find me dancing on the streets for coins. But you're a wonderful dancer. Well, it keeps bread on the table anyway. What's this? Oh, I should have to paint them. The blacksmith and the baker. You're a surprising person, Quasimodo. Not to mention Lucky. All this room to yourself. Well, it's just not me. It's the gargoyles and the bells. Would you like to see them? Yes, of course. Would it be jolly? Wow! I bet the king himself doesn't have a view like this. I could stay up here forever. You could, you know. No, I couldn't. But you have sanctuary. But not freedom. Gypsies don't do well inside stone walls. But you're not like the other gypsies. They're evil. Who told you that? My master, Prolo. He raised me. How could such a cruel man raise someone like you? Cruel? Oh, no. He's kind to me. He took me in when nobody else would have. I'm a monster, you know. He told you that. Look at me. Give me your hand. Why? Now, let's see. Uh, this means a long lifeline. And this one means you're shy. Uh, well, that's funny. What? I don't see any. Any what? Monster lines. Now, look at me. Do I look evil? Oh, no, you're very good and kind and, and a gypsy. Or maybe Frollo's wrong about the both of us. Psst. What did she say? She said Frollo's nose is long and he wears a truss. Ha, told you, pay up. You help me, now I will help you. But there's no way out. There's soldiers at every door. Who says we gotta use a door? Uh, you mean climb down? Sure. Okay, come on, Jolly. The trick is not to look down. Uh, you've done this before? No. Then you're quite an acrobat. Check the alley. I didn't scare you. Not for an instant. I'll never forget you, Esmeralda. Come with me. What? To the court of miracles. Leave this place. You saw what happened to me out there? No, I'm not leaving this place. This is where I belong. Then I'll come to see you. But Frollo in the garden? I'll come after sunset. But at sunset, I have to ring the evening mass, and I have to clean the cloisters, and I have to risk the vespers and Whatever is good for you. If you ever need sanctuary, this will show you the way. But how? When you wear this woven band, you hold a city in your hand. Hurry, you must leave. Come on, Charlie. Eh? I'm looking for the gypsy girl Esmeralda. Have you seen her? Whoa, whoa, uh, easy there. No soldiers, sanctuary, get out! But wait, all I wanted was to... Go! I mean her no harm. Go! Um, all right, I'll go now. 
But will you tell her from me that I didn't mean to trap her here, but it was the only way to save her life? Will you tell her that? If you go, now! All right, all right, I'll go then. Oh, yes, and one more thing. Tell Esperanza, she's a very lucky girl. Why? To have a friend like you. Hey, hey, boys, there he is. Oh. You ejected that tin-plated baboon with great panache. The nerve of him, snooping around here, trying to steal your girl? My girl? Esmeralda? Dark hair, works with a goat, remember? Boy, I sure do. Where the girl, lover boy? Lover boy? Oh, no. Oh, don't be so modest. Look, I appreciate it. But let's not fool ourselves. Ugliest face in Paris, remember? I don't think I'm her type. Oh. So many times out there I've watched a happy pair Of lovers walking in the night They had a kind of glow around them It almost looked like heaven's alive I knew I never know that warm and loving glow Though I might wish with all my might No face as hideous as my face Was ever meant for heaven's light But suddenly an angel has smiled at me And kissed my cheek without a trace of pride I dare to dream that she might even care for me And as I ring these bells tonight My cold dark tower seems so bright I swear it must be heaven's light Get out, you idiot. I'll find her. I'll find her. And if needed, I'll burn down all of Paris. Guards, attention. Sir. Good morning, sir. <sighs> um, are you all right, sir? I had a bit of trouble with the fireplace. Well, I see. Ah, uh, your orders, sir. Find the gypsy girl! Ten pieces of gold for the gypsy Esmeralda. No takers? Lock them up! <coughs> Twenty pieces of gold for the gypsy Esmeralda. Once again, no takers? Take them away! <coughs> Go to the miller's house. We found a gypsy talisman on your property. Have you been harboring gypsies? I am placing you and your family under house arrest until I get to the bottom of this. If what you say is true, you are innocent and have nothing to fear. I assure you, we are innocent. We know nothing of these gypsies. Burn it. What? Until it smolders. Those people are traitors and must be made examples of. With uh, all due respect, sir, I was not trained to murder the innocent. 
But you were trained to follow orders. No way. Insolent coward! The sentence for insubordination is death. I want it, get me up! Such a pity you threw away such a promising career. Consider it's my highest honor. Why? Hit him! Let the trader rot in his watery grave and find the gypsy girl. If needed, burn down all of Paris. So. Stay calm. We must not say one word to Quasimodo. He's worried enough already. 
especially you, Victor. Okay, lighten up now, okay? Shh, shh, shh. Sure, he comes. Easy does it? No, just stay calm. Not a word. Any sign of her? Oh, it's a lost cause. She could be anywhere. In the stocks, in the dungeons, on the rack. <laughs> yes. Nice work, Victor. No, he's right. She could be anywhere. What are you talking about? If I know Esmeralda, she's ten steps ahead of Frollo and well out of harm's way. Do you really think so? Hey, hey, when things cool off, she'll be back. You'll see. What makes you so sure? Well, because she likes you. We always said you were the cute one. I thought I was the cute one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You're the big, fat, stupid one with the very strange wings. What are you saying exactly? Well, knights in shining armor certainly aren't her type. And those guys, they're a dime a dozen. But you, you're one of a kind. Look. Quasimodo, Esmeralda, Esmeralda, I knew you would be all right. You've done so much for me already, my friend. But I must ask your help one more time. Yes, anything. This is Phoebus. He is wounded and a fugitive like me. 
I know he'd not go much longer. I knew he'd be safe here. Please, could you hide him? Come, follow me. Ah, uh, Esperanza. Shh, you'll hide her until you're strong enough to move. That family owes you their lives. You're either the single bravest soldier I've ever seen, or the craziest. Ex-soldier, remember? Why is it, whenever we meet, I end up bleeding? That arrow almost pierced your heart. I'm not so sure it didn't. Hurry, you must leave. Frollo's coming. Throw down the south tower steps. Promise me you won't let anything happen to him. I promise. Thank you, Quasimodo. Goats these days. Oh, Master, I didn't think you'd be coming. I'm never too busy to share a meal with you, dear boy. I brought a little treat. <clears throat> Is there something troubling you, Quasimodo? Oh, nothing, Master. Oh, but there is. I know there is. I think you're hiding something. Nothing, master. You're not eating, boy. It's very good. <coughs> Crumbs. What's different in here? Nothing, master. Isn't this one new? It's awfully good. Looks very much like the gypsy girl I knew. You helped her escape. But I... And now all of Paris is burning down because of you. She was kind to me, master. You idiot, that wasn't kindness. It was cunning. Gypsies are not capable of real love. Think, boy, think of your mother. But what chance could a poor, misshapen child like you have against her heathen treachery? Well, never mind. She will be out of our lives soon enough. She will torment you no longer. I what? shall free you from her evil spell. What do you mean, master? I know where her hideout is. And tomorrow at dawn, I attack with a thousand men. We have to find the Court of Miracles before daybreak. If Frollo gets there first... Wait. Are you even coming with me? I can't. I thought you were Esmeralda's friend. Frollo's my master. I can't disobey him again. But she stood up for you. You've got a funny way of showing gratitude, you know. Well, I'm not going to sit by and watch Frollo massacre the entire town. You do what you feel is right. Look! What am I supposed to do? Save the girl into the jaws of death and the whole town will cheer like I'm some sort of hero. I'm tired of being something I'm not. She already has her knight in shining armor and it's not me. Frollo was right. Frollo was always right. I must be out of my mind. Phoebus! Yes? I'm coming with you. I'm glad you changed your mind. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for her. Wait, you know where she is? No, but she said this would help us find her. Oh, good, good, good. Ah, this is great. But what is this? <laughs> I'm not sure. Huh, looks like a chord. Maybe it's ancient Arabic. No, it's not Arabic. Maybe it's ancient Greek. When you wear this woven band, you hold the city in your hand. What? It's the city. What are you talking about? See, the cathedral, the river, and this small symbol. Well, I have never seen a map like this. And this is not it. it. Fine. You say it's a map. Fine. It's a map. If we're going to find Esperanza, we have to work together. Truth? Sorry. No, you're not. Oh,
Harvey Modo, on using his presence of mind, realizes that Esmeralda had left behind a clue with regard to her hideout, the gypsy talisman. So following his heart and the root on the woven band, he makes his way along with Phoebus to the Court of Miracles. Let us see what happens next. This looks like the symbol on the map. But what does it mean? Hmm, I'm not so sure. I can make out an inscription, yes. But I will take a few minutes to translate it. Oh, well, we could just go that way. Is this the Court of Miracles? Well, offhand, I'd say it's the Court of Ankle Deep Switch. Must be the old catacombs. It's such a cheerful place. Kinda makes you wish you got out more often, hey, Quasi? Not me. I just want to warn Esmeralda and go back to the Belta. I don't want to fall into any more trouble. Speaking of trouble, we should have run into some by now, don't what, you think? What do you mean? You know, a guard, a booby trap, or an ambush. Well, 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 what have we here? Trespassers? Spies? We're, We're not, not spies. spies. Can't you hear? Don't interrupt me. You're very clever to have found our hideaway. But unfortunately, you won't live to tell the tale. Quasimodo, help me escape from Frollo in the cathedral. We came to warn you. Frollo's coming. He says he knows where you're hiding. And at dawn, he will attack with a thousand men. Then we must waste no time. We must leave immediately. You took a terrible risk coming here. It may not exactly show, but we are grateful. Don't thank me. Thank Quasimodo. Without his help, I would have never found my way here. No would I. <laughs> After 20 years of searching, the Court of Miracles is mine at last. Thank you, dear Quasimodo. I knew you would prove to be of some use to me someday. What are you talking about? Well, he led me right to you, dear. You're a liar. Ah, look what else have I caught in my net. The gallant Captain Phoebus, back from the dead. Another miracle, no doubt. I shall remedy that. There will be a little bonfire in the square a little later, to which you all are invited to attend. 
Lock them up. No, master, please. Take him away and make sure he does not escape from the bell tower again. The gypsy Esmeralda has been found guilty of the crime of witchcraft. The sentence? Death. No, that's not fair. The time has come, gypsy. You now stand upon the brink of the abyss. Yet, it's not too late. I can save you from the flames of this world and the next. Choose me or fire. Fire. The gypsy Esmeralda has refused to recant. She has put the soul of every citizen of Paris in mortal danger. Come on, Quasi. Snap out of it. Your friends are down there. It's all my fault. You've got to break these chains, Quasimodo. I tried. I can't. What difference would it make? But you can't let Frollo win. He already has. So that's it? You're just giving up? These chains aren't what's holding you back now, are they, Quasimodo? Leave me alone! Okay, okay, Quasi. We'll leave you alone. <laughs> After all, we're only made of stone. We just thought that maybe you were made of something stronger than stone like us. Quasimodo. <laughs> for justice, for Paris, and for her own salvation, I now have the shameful duty of sending this poor gypsy witch back to where she belongs. Frollo! Quasimodo? <laughs> Sanctuary! 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 Captain, we must seize the cathedral! Citizens of Paris! Frollo has persecuted our people ransacked our city and has now declared war on Notre Dame herself. But will we allow it? No! 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 Let's seize the cathedral. Frollo! Have you gone mad? I will not tolerate this assault on the house of God. Silence, you old fool. Fro the hunchback and I have some unfinished business to attend to. And this time, you shall not intervene. Oh, Quasimodo, where are you? Quasi, quasi, Quasimodo. You killed Esmeralda! Horrible as it was, it was my duty. I hope you can forgive me. There, there. I shall now put an end to all your suffering. Now listen to me, Quasimodo. No, you listen. For all these years, you told me that the world outside was dark and cruel. But the only dark and cruel thing I can see is you and people like you. Quasimodo! She lives? Esmeralda. I knew you would risk your life trying to save this gypsy witch. The same way your mother died trying to save you. Roll off! Ah!
gentlemen, now for a signature curtain call, right here in the new hall.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being such a cooperative, participative audience. You have encouraged the children every step of the way, and even though their producer, Mrs. Mystery, is not here today, you have done excellently well. You deserve a very big round of applause. Let's hear it even louder than that, boys and girls. I want to say a very special thank you to the backstage boys, to the staff who worked on all the decor of the stage. You know, every time we put up a play, it amazes me with the artistic talent we have, with the way you get your backdrops done, and it's so beautifully done, matches the scene, matches the whole theme of the play. Thank you very much. A few years ago, a few years ago, whenever I used to listen to the choir rehearsing, practicing, I used to give Mrs. Miss Rachel Thomas a big shout because I was never happy with what they were doing. But last year, during the sesquicentennial year, the choir really stepped forward and they really did well. And today, you could have seen the fruit of all their practices, their rehearsals. <laughs> Bishop School, Bishop School is always known for its excellent academics. We were also known and we still are known as the top school in football in Pune. And I'm sure we are the top school also in dramatics and music. Once more for them, please. I love these smiles over here. Have you enjoyed bringing this to us tonight? You haven't. You have? Do you want to put it up again? I think we might if we, if we have more people to watch, but on behalf of the chairman, the governing body members, all the staff, my wife and myself, all the heads, I want to say thank you to you children. You've done excellently well and you've made us very proud of you. Well done, God bless, and we look for much more from you in future. It's now my duty to acknowledge the hard work put in by so many on the stage and behind the stage. Firstly, on behalf of the staff and students, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our principal, Mr. Fries, and Mrs. Fries, our headmistress, for the constant support and encouragement and the trust that you have in your team, sir, for putting up such plays. We like to have our staff come forward and uh, do accept a token of our appreciation. <laughs> so I'd, I'd request you to come forward and hand over some of the appreciations to a few staff who have been involved with this play. We'd like to thank our art department and I would call upon Mr. Nitin Yadav, Mr. Fasle, Ms. Molu, Mrs. Molu and Yogesh Ghatkare for all the hard work in putting up the backdrops and the panels. Can we hear it for them and can we have the staff come forward and receive our token of appreciation? We'd now like to thank our pre-primary staff for being ever so willing and always helpful in the assistance that they give us every time for the makeup and the costumes for this event. We like to appreciate the efforts of Mrs. Hakamanishi. Ma'am, if you can keep coming forward. Ms. P. Xavier, Mrs. J. Murthy, Ms. C. Bernard, Ms. J. Dinger, Ms. T. Salvera, Ms. B. R., Mrs. T. Dharwad, and Mrs. Macedo. The teachers, you can come forward, please. We'd like to appreciate uh, 
Mr. Marizbani Rani for the vibrant sound this evening. As well as for all the, the rehearsals we've had over the past few days. We'd like to thank Mr. Sachin Lele for the lights, for the brilliant lights this evening. So Sachin, if you can come forward. We'd also like to thank Balasab for the makeup for all our actors on stage. If Balasab is here, if you can come forward. We'd like, now like to acknowledge the hard work of our estate department for making all the arrangements for this evening's program. I would call upon Mr. G. Barron and Mr. L. Johns to come forward. And on behalf of the estate, accept a token of our appreciation. Mr. Barron, Mr. John. In the meanwhile, if I can get some of the support staff who actually worked very long hours to get this function in place. Can we have Manoj, Subhash, Jaktap and Ramesh come forward? Manoj. That's Manoj, Subhash, Jaktap and Ramesh, our support staff who stayed long hours to get this function in place. We now have Bala Saab, who is the makeup artist and gets our actors in place for the program. Thank you, Bala Saab. We would like to thank the kitchen department for all the refreshments during the rehearsals as well as for this evening's function. We thank you, Mr. Joshi. If you are in the hall, if you can come forward, please. For the PowerPoint presentation, we would like to thank Ms. Sheikh, Mr. Fartare, and Mr. Fazang. If you all can come forward. A big thank you to our stage crew who are at the back of the stage and they're all our junior college students for managing all the backdrops and the panels during this event. I request Aditya Agarwal to come forward and on behalf of the stage crew accept the token of our There were a few of our staff who went out of the way and worked tirelessly to ensure that this event is possible and for making it such a delightful one for us this evening. I would like to call Ms. Olivia Routh to come forward. She was, in a, she was innovative and made these children look brilliant in their costumes this evening. So can we hear it for Olivia? I would like to thank Mr. Terence Anthony for choreographing and uh, staging all the wonderful dances you've seen this evening. He's always been a help on the stage as well as for anything else which he requires his assistance for. Can we have Mr. Terence Anthony? For the singing, which was truly amazing, and it was heartwarming to see so many children who want to be a part of this wonderful choir. For training the choir and making this evening such a delight, we would like to thank Ms. Rachel Thomas. And last but not least, it's uh, a congratulations and honest thanks to a lady who conceptualized the whole play. She wrote the script, did the audition for the cast, directed the play. Let's put our hands together for Mrs. Gulnar Mistri. As, as Mr. Fries has already mentioned, she's not with us this evening as she's in Mumbai. We we'll request uh, Dhruv Vagani to come and on behalf of Mrs. Mistri receive her token of appreciation. Thank you. 
I would like to thank you, parents, for your cooperation in allowing your wards to be a part of this cast, the dancers, and the choir. More so when we've rescheduled the examination, you still allow them to be a part of this event. We sincerely thank you for all your cooperation and the support that you give the school. And in this way, can we hear it for the parents? And in this way, we can showcase the talent of our students by organizing such events. I would like to thank the audience for taking your time and being with us this evening, and I hope you had a wonderful evening. Finally, to those who are on stage at the back, can we all rise and give them a round of applause? I think we've done it twice. Can we do it for the third time? Well done, students. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening, and God bless each one of you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, after end, at the end of not a long evening, but a very entertaining evening, an evening filled with a display of talent, I hope a lot of these children are going to think in future, when they get a director in the FTTI, that a lot of them are going to apply to take, get their training as actors and actresses. Maybe you'll apply to the Film Institute of India in Pune. God bless you and thank you very much once again. But, okay, let's have it for them again, please. But ladies and gentlemen, there is always a but in everything. And the but here today is that we have forgotten, or maybe not forgotten, we normally reserve the best for the last. I want to say a very, very big thank you to Mr. Edwin for all his very hard work, for always being there and encouraging the children in whatever they do. Mr. Edwin, is turning out to be a very good headmaster because wherever you look, you find him there. Wherever there is trouble, he's there to sort it out. Where there, wherever there's an event, he's there to guide and to help and to push people to getting the best for bishops. And he's one of the people in bishops who always keeps that flag flying very high. As my deputy, I'm very proud of the work that you do. Well done, Joel. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the National Anthem. Immediately after the National Anthem, we have one more very pleasant duty to do, so don't rush. Straight after the Anthem, please be seated. Seated. We had not forgotten this uh, part of the evening, but we'd also like to say a very big thank you to the Korean team for being with us, for taking part in all that we've been doing in the last few days, and for also being here. I'd like, I'd like the Korean principal 
please come forward. Principal, sir. Also, Mrs. Someone who has been with the Korean team right from the day they arrived, moving around with them all along, taking them around, sending me photographs. We are here, we are there, we are everywhere else. Children are enjoying themselves. And someone who really has taken her job very seriously in the school, I'd like to say thank you to Corinne Daniels. I do believe Mrs. Daniels is, as I said, she's been all around. And with the Korean team, I do believe she's looking into the arrangements for the dinner tonight. I invite the Korean boys, the Korean staff and the principal, and the other heads of our schools to please join me for dinner downstairs in the Harding Hall. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. God bless you and good night.